Jim Harbaugh believes that Michigan is America's team. And I say that not because he said that, but because I think generally, for the most part, Jim Harbaugh believes what he says. And I think he should be commended for that. Very rarely does he say things that he thinks are untrue, poppycock, balderdash, malarkey, other words for bullshit. I, I don't think he ever says anything that he doesn't truly believe which is a lost quality. Whether you agree with everything he says or not is a different discussion. But the fact that he believes what he says, I think, is admirable. So Jim Harbaugh believes that Michigan is America's team. Do you believe that? Because I'm struggling with the idea that Michigan is America's team because you have seen the reaction to I guess you, first of all, we've seen the reaction from Michigan, right? You, you saw the response Saturday, I guess even Friday when it was announced that Jim Harbaugh had been suspended and was not going to be coaching on Saturday. Now, I'm flat out surprised that the temporary restraining order, injunction, whatever, was not filed in time to be there, not filed in time for him to coach on Saturday. I'm genuinely surprised by that. Um, I, I was taken aback that he was not on the sidelines on Saturday because, you know, the whole we're prepared for every possible scenario from his lawyers. Like, okay, well, that sounds like you're going to be the coach on Saturday then no matter what. And he wasn't, but you saw the reaction from the players and I, I believe me, I don't expect any other reaction from their players of, because you get brainwashed and you can pretend that like the fans get brainwashed, let alone the players are brainwashed. The players are brainwashed to believe that the people that they have put their extreme trust and faith in do no wrong. And that it is literally the idea that nobody can stand us being on top of the college football world. That's why they're trying to tear us down. They don't get the ability to separate themselves from the situation or view things from 10,000 feet or whatever. They don't, they don't get that opportunity. So I have no, I don't have any qualm for the players. Like at some point, will they look back and be like, Oh wait, <laughs> cause, cause if you're cheating, <laughs> If you are stealing signs and then implementing and letting your players know, like they know that they are doing something wrong. And maybe at some point they'll circle back around when they're older and be like, yeah, yeah, we kind of were cheating and that didn't, that wasn't a great look for us. Like that's likely that could potentially happen down the line. But right now, especially in the middle of the season, they're never going to be like, well, hey, everybody, the evidence is really kind of overwhelming. Like that's not going to happen. But you see the response from their coaching staff where and, and then some of the response has been to mock them where they almost treated it as if like Jim Harbaugh had died on Friday rather than been held accountable for his actions. But the response somewhat from the media has been and like you're always going to get this because frankly, we're too chicken bleep to point out or deal with the really the the seedy underbelly of sports anytime like the, the, even now like announcers will be like ah you know it's admirable what Deshaun Watson has done on the field this year in the face of adversity like that's the adversity he created he made a series of really poor decisions right and like people can like at some point somebody will say like Jim Harbaugh made a mistake like no, no, no. My mistake is using a teaspoon when the when the recipe said tablespoon. Okay, Jim Harbaugh made a series of purposeful, and you can argue that he didn't know. I don't believe that, but nonetheless, Deshaun Watson made a series of really poor character choices. Okay, like he didn't make a mistake like twenty eight times. Jim Harbaugh didn't make a mistake for three seasons. Okay. Like that's just not, <laughs> that's not what a mistake is. You made a series of conscious decisions over and over and over again that 
event that you thought nobody would ever find out to get you an advantage in a college football game. I don't think he's the only one that will do anything <laughs> that lacks integrity, character, morals, whatever, ethics to get an advantage in college football. But he's the one we're talking about right now because he got caught. But the reaction has been like, yeah, I'm rooting for Michigan through all this. And I'm struggling with that because how, how are you rooting for them through this? It cannot always be that someone who is found to have done something wrong is being wronged by the oppressors. Like it has everything in our society has been turned in somehow, some way into an us versus them mentality. It's me versus the world. And I get it to a point. But. When the evidence is overwhelming that you have done something wrong, unethical, against the rules, how that person, team, organization, whatever the case may be, then becomes like the, the darling and the, you know what, I'm actually going to root for them. It doesn't make a lick of sense to me. Like, are we that morally bankrupt or don't have a moral compass that makes you think like, well, wait a second. Um, those guys were breaking the rules, but because the man's trying to take them down, I'm rooting for him now. Well, wait, what? On what plan? Like, who in the hell watches like the Batman movies from the nineties and being like, you know what? Batman's trying to kick the Joker's ass. I'm kind of rooting for Jack Nicholson here. How <laughs> do you not have like character or morals or principles? If I was a Michigan fan, I would really be struggling with this because like, it's abundantly clear that my team cheated and that cheating coincided with us getting really good at the sport. And I would, I would, it, it would be difficult for me to separate those two things. It, it just would. Cause I have principles and character and integrity and ethics and a conscience. So this idea that just basically by saying like we didn't do anything wrong and if we did it's not that big of a deal and also here are other people doing similar things that aren't against the rules but they're also doing it too and then people buying that i just i'm really struggling with that because there is a sizable portion of people who are like yeah michigan's getting screwed here and it's like well wait no every and it's like every time and it, I, I see it more in politics than sports, but like every time something comes up that, well, how, what about this? And then you explain to somebody like why they're wrong about that. Sign stealing ain't illegal. Like it ain't illegal to scout. Well, yes, it is actually. You, you're not allowed to do it. Well, it shouldn't be. Well, that's two different things. It's the same thing with like the targeting rule of like, um, you know, the, the guy hit the defensive street with the crown of his helmet. That's targeting. Well, that's not targeting. Well, yes, it is. He used the crown of his helmet to hit a defenseless receiver. Well, that shouldn't be a rule. Well, that's a different discussion because it is a rule. And by the letter of the law, you can't go scout people in person. You can't steal their signs using video cameras. It's just not allowed. And yet, when you explain that to people who are like, well, that's not illegal. And you say, well, actually it is. Here's the bylaw that says you're not allowed to do that. The immediate response is, well, it shouldn't be. Well, that doesn't matter. It is illegal. Whether you think it should be illegal or not is irrelevant. So I just, I have problems computing the idea that Michigan is now like the underdog darling that people are rooting for to see them succeed in the face of adversity. The adversity that they created. Like, um, who's... Uh, oh, it's DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins' mom was the victim of an acid attack when she wasn't even the intended target. That's a crazy lady threw acid on her and blinded her. 
And she, you know, finds ways to come to DeAndre Hopkins's football games and he gets her the football every time he scores a touchdown, et cetera. And it's a really great story. That is fighting through adversity. Bishop Sankey, who back in the day played running back at Washington, um, as a somewhat similar story of uh, you know, C.J. Stroud, his dad is in prison and will be till 2036 or whatever. Like th That's the adversity that C.J. Stroud has to fight through. C.J. Stroud's dad made some bad decisions and is in prison. C.J. Stroud's dad is dealing with the accountability of his actions. Jim Harbaugh is dealing with the accountability of his actions. When you create adversity for yourself, you're not overcoming adversity. And it shouldn't be celebrated. It shouldn't be lauded, patted on the back, etc. You broke the rules that everybody agreed to follow and then acted as if you were the victim. It's bull crap. I hate it. And it's not just Michigan. It's not just college football. It's in life. If you made bad decisions and then we find out about them and you're held accountable for them, when you cry that you're the victim, I have no sympathy, no empathy. I have nothing for you other than the good old fashioned like Nelson Muntz. Ha -ha! Like I, can't, I, I, I just can't feel anything other than that. And so for Michigan to now try to reverse the victim order, right? They're trying to say we're the ones that are actually the victim now because look at the irreparable damage that has been done to our university, our brand, our football program. You did it to yourself. People finding out about your misdeeds does not make you the victim. Damn it. <laughs> like Nothing drives me battier than that. You might not like the messenger that is disseminating the information, but the information being true and accurate does not dismiss the fact that you did things wrong. And I have no ability to get over that. So for the people who view and, and the problem is the people who are now like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm rooting for Michigan are ignorant and not like ignorant, like by the literal definition of the word ignorant, they do not know the facts, right? They do not have all of the available information. The problem is, is there is willful ignorance where if I were to present you with all of the things that are factually true, There are still people who would be like, well, I'm still rooting for him, damn it. Like, yeah, how? How? But that's just the world that we live in today. So I don't, I, I'm really struggling with grasping all of this. And I don't know, I don't know how to move forward with that because like, the evidence is abundantly clear of what happened, what went on. And if you can put two and two together and not get 6,472, it's really easy to see what went on. And for you to then still be like, I'm kind of rooting for him. I don't get it. And I don't know that I ever will. <sighs> okay. I'll try to calm down for the rest of the day. We'll see how that goes. Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content we're pumping out here on Saturday Glory. If you're listening on the podcast, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. Back at it tomorrow. Maybe Jamie Chadwell will learn how to turn off the location on his tweets. We might talk about that tomorrow here on the Daily Huddle with Saturday Glory.